हरि ओम परम पूज्य गुरुदेव स्वामी चिन्मयानंदाज ब्लेझिंग ग्लोबल ट्रेल नेव्हर कम्प्लेन अबाउट द नंबर ऑफ आवर्स यू हॅव पुट इन टू डू अ जॉब युअर नोबिलिटी मस्ट एस्टिमेट हाऊ मच ऑफ यू वॉज पुट इन टू ईच आवर ऑफ युअर डेली वर्क अ मॅन हूज लव्ह एम्ब्रेसेस द होल वर्ल्ड बिकम्स द किथ अँड किन ऑफ ऑल हू कम अक्रॉस हिम इंटरनॅशनल रीच सिम्ड टू नॅचरली फॉलो स्वामी चिन्मयानंदास रॅपिडली ग्रोईंग नॅशनल स्टॅच्युअर अराउंड नाईन्टीन सिक्स्टी टू सम ऑफ हिज आर्डंट डिवोटेज कन्सिव्ह द आयडियाज ऑफ अ वर्ल्ड टूर अँड बिगॅन वर्किंग ऑन अरेंजमेंट्स फॉर इट ऑन मार्च सिक्स नाईन्टीन सिक्स्टी फाय स्वामीजी बिगॅन हिज फर्स्ट ग्लोबल टूर ऑफ ट्वेल्व कंट्रीज इन्क्लुडिंग द यू एस ए स्विझरलँड द वेस्ट इंडिज थायलंड साऊथ आफ्रिका मॉरिशस अँड मलाशि मलेशिया वेर एव्हर द ही वेंट स्वामीजी ड्रू क्राऊड्स बिकॉज ही वॉज ब्लेस्ड विथ द प्रेशियस गिफ्ट ऑफ बिंग एबल टू टेलर हिज टॉक्स टू स्यूट द कल्चरल एथोज अँड नीड्स ऑफ एनी टार्गेट ऑडियन्स ही ॲड्रेस्ड दो हिज डिस्कोर्सेस वेअर लार्जली ऑन वेदांत अँड हिंदू कल्चर हिज रॅशनल अप्रोच अँड युनिव्हर्सल कम्पॅशन टच द हार्ट्स ऑफ पीपल इरिस्पेक्टिव्ह ऑफ देअर कल्चरल अँड रिलिजियस बॅकग्राऊंड्स मेनी फॉलोअर्स ऑफ अदर फेथ्स लाईक क्रिश्चनिटी अँड बुद्धिझम बिकेम हिज डिवोटेज डॉक्टर बॉल्डविन जॉर्ज अ ख्रिश्चन मिनिस्टर ऑफ त्रिनीनाथ लेफ्ट इज होमलँड टू जॉईन द सांदीबनी साधनालय इन बॉम्बे स्वामीजी मॅन द सिटीझन ऑफ द वर्ल्ड about photo the sun shines on all as does his grace swami chinmayan the enjoying a virginia beach sunrise with devotees and this is talking uh, walking through the redwood forest in california सो ही जॉईंट संदीपनी साधनाल इन बॉम्बे इवन टुडे इन अमेरिका चिन्मय मिशन पार्टिसिपेट्स इन मेनी इंटरफेथ कॉन्ग्रिगेशन्स ख्रिश्चन लिडर्स आर इन्वायटेड बाय द मिशन टू टॉक अबाउट देअर फेथ इन टर्न चिन्मय मिशन स्वामी इज ऑफन डिलिव्हर लेक्चर्स इन चर्चेस डिस्पाईट इज डायवर्स फॉलोइंग स्वामीजी नेव्हर एनकरेज कन्वर्शन ही टोल्ड हिज डिवोटीज हू बिलॉंग टू अदर फेथ कंटिन्यू देअर ड्युटीज अकॉर्डिंग टू द फेथ ऑफ देअर बर्थ अँड ऑल्सो लर्न वेदांत ही एक्सप्लेन दॅट फॉर वन हू विथ अन ओपन माइंड वेदांत इज अन इफेक्टिव्ह मीन्स ऑफ सेल्फ इम्प्रूवमेंट इट एम्स ॲट मेकिंग अ हिंदू अ बेटर हिंदू a christian a better christian and so on this is one of the reasons for hinduism in its original form not accepting or indulging in conversion from one faith to another swami ji's first global tour was a huge success in its wake came many more such tours soon foreign visits were a regular feature of his itinerary 
द स्पेशल चार्म ऑफ स्वामीजीज टीचिंग्स वॉज दैट इट वॉज नेवर अ वन टाइम अफेयर इन द फॉर्म ऑफ टॉक्स टू बी हर्ड एंड फॉर गॉटन ही सीम्ड टू इन्फ्लुएंस एंड इंस्पायर पीपल सो डीपली दैट फॉर वेर एवर इवेंट पीपल केम टूगेदर इन ग्रुप्स फॉर्म सेंटर्स एंड अंडर टूक रेगुलर स्क्रिप्चरल स्टडी स्पिरिचुअल प्रैक्टिस एंड सोशल एंड कल्चरल वर्क over the years swami ji was welcomed as a visiting professor to many of the leading american universities his talks on philosophy education and value based management were organized in many institutions like the university of california at berkeley mit and cornell university In 1992 he undertook a lecture tour of 12 American universities to establish an international library and research center the Chinmay International Foundation set up in Kerala in the ancestral mater- maternal home of profound spiritual visionary Adi Shankar Acharya Soon annual Chinmay spiritual camps became a regular feature of the activities in different parts of America. It became necessary to coordinate the growing spiritual reach in the US. The Chinmay Mission West was born in 1975 for this purpose under the jurisdiction of Pier USA Canada. Under its jurisdiction appear USA, Canada, Central and South America, West Indies, Mexico, Trinidad and any future establishments in those parts of the world. Many places in these countries have their own mission centers with study classes, Bal Viharas, Chinmay Yuva Kendra centers, camps and lecture courses and the like. The three-year Brahmacharya's training course was also started in Chinmay Mission West to mold Hindu missionaries. Swamiji also participated regularly in forums and meetings of all religions for better universal understanding, such as the one organized by the Sufi master Pir Vilayat Khan in 1975 at San Francisco, USA. In all his foreign tours Swami ji met a vast cross section of the educated of each country presided over important functions and was widely interviewed in newspapers and magazines radio and tv his clear rational answers to all questions peppered with cerebral humor and memorable examples made him a huge hit with the press and the media Even more significant was the manner in which he won over millions of hearts through his unconditional love and selfless service. The renowned American magazine Hinduism Today gave Swami Chinmayananda its prestigious Hindu Renaissance Award and the title Hindu of the Year in 1992. This title is given to those who make the strongest impact on all Hindus of the world and each teach hinduism vastness tolerance compassion and spiritual depth slowly but surely swami ji was creating and molding the chinmaya family a global global unit of people dedicated to live and spread the principles of a noble and fine way of life both the great teacher and the timeless teaching he stood for represent the universal perennial philosophy of sanatan dharma naturally both belong to the entirety of humanity a man firmly established in wisdom is tranquil and his equipoise is never broken even when he is investing his entire energy in the world outside for the service of mankind mankind towering strength love and compassion a unique monster out of purity and silence come the words of power 
Swami Jinmananda was perhaps best known for his, uh, for his fiery, eloquent interpretation of Hindu scriptures and philosophy. He was revered the world over as a firm yet compassionate teacher, a sannyasi of the highest order, a brilliant organizer, a person of boundless energy, a strict disciplinarian, a fearless upholder of values, and above all, one whose deep love had the magic of touching and transforming millions. There are several unique qualities that he possessed that are a source of much inspiration for us. Swamiji was a man of unshakable courage of conviction and a clear system of values that he never com- compromised with. He was once invited to the home of a Muslim leader after which he had to address a gathering of Hindus in the same area. At a time when the Hindu-Muslim relationship in the country was a strained one, against the advice of all the devotees, he decided to accept the invitation of the Muslim leader saying, I belong to the whole world. A Muslim has as much right to invite me to his home as does a Hindu, and I must accept it. He was received by the Muslims in traditional Hindu style with Vedic chanting after partaking of the meal with the Muslim family. Swamiji went over to the Hindu gathering in the next street and delivered a fiery speech on how they should never let anyone insult or undermine their faith. Swamiji was possessed of unimaginable energy. Devotees all over the world would touch, vouch for the fact that every letter written to him would elicit a reply in a few days from whichever corner of the globe he was at that point of time. With even the address on the envelope often handwritten by him, he wrote over a hundred letters a day, over and above all the other aspects of his busy daily schedule. On one occasion, when his address book was misplaced by his secretary, he dedicated he dictated 250 addresses, including the pin codes from the from his photographic memory. Swamiji was a stern disciplinarian, but a very loving one too. He sometimes demonstrated that seemed like anger to discipline his students, but any person with depth of vision could see that it was more for effect and that Swamiji's inner poise was unaffected. He expected silence in his large audience as he spoke. Few realized that this was only for the benefit of his listeners who came from far and near. If a person in the front rows of the audience rose to live in the middle of the talks, Swamiji would stop talking till he or she left the hall and only then resume the talk. People often misunderstood this pause as an unwarranted demonstration of irritation on Swamiji's part. But this was not the case. Swamiji knew that when a person rose from the middle of the audience, others' attention would be delivered and they would not be able to focus on the next few sentences of the talk. So out of consideration for his audience, often numbering thousands, Swamiji would wait for the crowd to settle down to resume his talk. Swamiji's punctuality assumed legendary fame. On his passing away, it was reported by leading newspapers that Swamiji had never been even a minute late for any of his talks in all of 40 years. People would often say that they could set their watches by his arrival on the dais for lecture. He stayed only a week or so in each place, delivering a minimum of two lectures a day 
and handling numerous meetings, interviews, discussions, and programs, yet keeping perfect time for years. Swamiji was possessed of an uncanny sense of humor. He kept his devotees enthralled with wonderful jokes that seemed to lighten even the most serious talk and at the same time clarify even abstract concepts. His way of his way with words was a constant source of delight and wonder to all. On the inaugural day of one of his yajnas at Madras, Swamiji commenced his address with the following words. To my right is A. Subramanyam. And indeed the president of the Madras mission was sitting to the right of Swamiji. And to my left is C. Subramanyam, a renowned statesman. The smile. That warmed a million hearts. That warmed a million hearts. The smile that warmed a million hearts. The traditional Pada Puja. Worship or at the feet of the Guru during which Swamiji mentally performed the same worship to his Guru. So this C. Subramaniam was the chief guest of the evening. And my message to you all, my life has been to ask you to be Subramaniam, be divine. On another occasion, while Swamiji was in re-entering the country after one of his foreign tours, a customs officer asked him if he had anything to declare. Many a sannyasi would have felt slighted by such a question because the ochre robe obviously symbolizes renunciation, but Swamiji whispered to the officer with a conspiratorial twinkle in his eyes, I have smuggled in many, many hearts from abroad. Swamiji's most endearing quality was the deep love and compassion he poured on every single devotee he met, whatever his or her background or position. On arriving at a place, he would often ignore all the elite members of the group to pay special attention to a quiet old woman in a corner or a hesitant teenager staring at him with undisguised admiration. His simple action would fill the recipient of his attention with joy and at the same time gently put in place the so-called influential and important members of the group. Another example of Swamiji's moving compassion was the fact that he would never give Vedantic advice to a deeply sorrowing person, knowing that philosophy may not appeal to a mind reeling with grief. Swamiji would whisper gentle, tender words of love and consolation that would often open up a dam of suppressed tears and help the person sob his or her sorrows sorrow away. Thousands regarded Swamiji as a towering intellectual, but few knew of his deep devotion and the tenderness he held in his bosom. On one occasion, he visited a shop to buy Radha. I am his Radha. Through this simple customary to sell only statues of Radha and Krishna together. However, Swamiji insisted on wanting to buy an icon of Lord Krishna alone. When the salesman wanted to know why, Swamiji replied, Why do I to buy Radha? I am his Radha. Through these simple words, he also taught us the 
spiritual truth that the legendary radha and krishna are not a mythological man and woman but symbols symbols of the divine love between a devotee and the lord in this manner many seemingly simple statements that some ji made were often filled with spiritual depth there was a mystical side of some ji that he really revealed hundreds of devotees have experienced the strange manner in which answers to their most important questions would appear in the course of some ji's talk it was almost as if he could intuitively read the questions in the minds of the audience and instantly respond to them on many occasions swami ji had been known to write letters of consolation and words of courage to people just before a calamity befell them swami chidmananda was indeed a unique guru who defied the tradition of students seeking the master and chose instead to come to his students and lift them up to higher plane of living in serene surrounding param pujya gurudev is shown in this photo he was a unique person who embodied the best in our tradition and yet he could easily interact with people of all races and places he could preside over homes and pujas in orthodox settings and at the same time talk in the rational language of science he symbolized modern india's thirst to move into the age of science and rationalism even while remaining firmly rooted in the world's oldest culture religion and philosophy the glorious dusk if a bird is not ready to end its present state how can it grow and unfold itself to become a flower his heart had enough space and his arms enough length to embrace the whole world This was so true of Swami Chinmayananda. But however large his heart and vast his intellect, he possessed only a human body which is subject by its very nature to age and illness. Swami Ji's health began to show signs of falling when he was in fifties. He was often assailed by bouts of high fever and throat of infection, but he kept up his furious pace of working. Swami ji had his first heart attack in 1970 at the age of From Mysore, he was shifted to the new, newly opened Chinmay Mission Hospital, Bangalore, as its first patient. People poured in from all over the world to visit him. Some of the most important men in the country called on him or sent him get well messages. Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba visited Swamiji to offer him his good wishes. doctors made it clear to swami ji that he had to slow down his impossible pace of globe trotting daily lectures hundreds of letters a day and just 3 hours of sleep each night however after a short retreat in uttarkashi swami ji was back in the saddle at the same time he also began to gradually hand over 
responsibilities and delegates administrative duties to others. Swami Ji's health continued to deteriorate with the occurrence of bouts of high fever and throat infection. Another ashram was cons- constructed in Siddhavadi, Himachal Pradesh, at the foothill of the Himalayas, from where students were to be trained for Hindi prachar, spread of the teaching. Spiritual training was commenced formally for students in many other regional languages too. To enable the scriptures to reach hundreds more, it was hoped that Swamiji would use the Sandipani Himalaya to retire. But he kept up his frantic pace of work till his heart was diagnosed as being in critical st- in a critical condition which called for immediate surgery. Dr. Denton Cooley, one of America's most renowned doctors, performed the open heart surgery on Swamiji's on Swamiji in 1980 after two months of forced bed rest. Swamiji was back yet again to his grinding and demanding routine. His senior disciples, the Swamis and Swaminis, of the Shinmay mission realized that they would have to take on more duties to share with their guru the huge responsibility of running a worldwide organization. Some were delegated state-wise jurisdiction, leaving Swamiji free of administrative duties to continue his role of a global teacher. Despite these and many more steps to reduce his workload, Swamiji kept up his routine including 21 hours of work a day, often laughingly saying that the only way he would leave the world was while completely immersed in his life's mission. And That was exactly how it happened. Swamiji was conducting a spiritual camp in Washington, D.C. in August 1993. During the camp, he told a devotee, The Lord has been calling me for, but all these people won't let me go. Towards the end of the camp, Swamiji experienced heart palpitations. Despite his condition, he conducted a prayer meeting and blessed the gathering. He went ahead according to the schedule and flew the next day to San Diego. Diego. The situation worsened where there and Swamiji had to be admitted to the Scripps Memorial Hospital. Minor efforts failed to help him. All Swamiji's native arteries were blocked and a major heart bypass surgery was performed at Sharp Memorial Hospital. About photo, looking for towards the subtle reaches of existence and this is grazing, gazing back at a life devoted to creating global metaphysical alchemy. Swami Chidanand, the world head of Divine Life Society, visited Swamiji and spent time at his bedside in prayer. He told the smiling devotees that Swamiji was in a divine and perfect stage of merger with the Self and was beyond pain. At noon, a picture of Lord Krishna placed above Swamiji's bed fell down. Amidst his devotees' heartfelt chanting and intense prayer, Swamiji left his mortal frame to attain the divine state of Mahasamadhi at 5.45 p.m. 
on 3rd August 1993 at San Diego, USA. Swamiji once said about the goal of life, when we are born, we enter the world crying and our relations and neighbors stand around and smile. Let us order our lives in such a manner that when we leave the world, we shall do so smiling in satisfaction and let others be left crying at the departure of such a noble one. This should be life's goal towards which one should strive. Millions the world over united in tears for the loss of one of the greatest champions religion ever had. In retrospect, it dawned on many devotees that Swamiji knew about his end all along. He had given clear instructions to the Chennai Chinmay Mission Trust to draw up his annual itinerary for the year 1993 only till the end of the month of July. By the 3rd of August, he had left his mortal frame. He had similarly dropped several hints to many of his devotees about not being around much longer. These hints gained clarity only later. The Master had equipped his devotees with the eternal strength giving teaching, strength giving teaching and left. When a Master departs from the earth, he leaves his presence behind in the form of his teachings. To live up to his vision becomes his devotee's mission. Nothing is lost in death death to the person of wisdom. For him it is but a change in name and form. The last rites. The highest form of grace is silence. Swami Chinmayananda departed his mortal frame to become one with the Supreme Lord on 3rd August 1993 in San Diego, USA. His mortal remains were flown to India and placed at Chinmay Mission, Delhi on 6th August 1993 for the public to pay homage. Swamiji's body had been embalmed in the traditional sitting position. He looked serene with a faint smile on his lips. Many political leaders, prominent members of society and thousands of devotees filed passed in prayer. Television and the press featured the event in their headlines, speaking and writing about Swamiji in the most glory, glowing terms. Message poured in from many national and world, world leaders and from Swamiji's beloved devotees the world over. At dusk, his immortal frame was to be lovingly transferred to its final resting place at Siddhavadi Ashram in Kangra. Kangra or northern Himachal Pradesh near the foothills of the Himalayan range. At Siddhavadi, the cottage was received the cortege was received in the traditional ceremonial manner, exactly as Swamiji used to be received in person. His physical frame was placed in a hall where over 2,000 devotees has gathered in that remote village from all corners of the globe. At very short notice, they sang bhajans and chanted all night along. The ray of light which emanated from Swamiji's mortal frame remains a scientifically unexplained fact. At dawn, the mortal remains were adorned in finery. The final 
arati was offered as the flame was reverentially waved before the physical abode of the master the poignancy of the moment was intense but devotees tempered their grief with spiritual maturity they moved to the garden behind his cottage to the spot he had earlier chosen as his final resting place it was in the middle of the valley with a sweep, sweeping view of green downs and the dholadhar ranges of the vast himalayan beyond as is customary for sanyasins the mortal remains were lowered in the sitting position into a traditionally prepared pit amidst vedic ch- vedic chanting the final rites were conducted disciples and devotees prostrated for the last time to the physical temple that hosted their guru swami chinmayananda's mortal remains were laid to rest at the foothills of the himalayas facing the most majestic and divine mountains in the world the home for of his guru swami tapon maharaj and the source of mother ganga who inspired him to serve the country relentlessly and selflessly as she does for those whose lives he had touched and transformed no amount of gratitude would ever be enough to indians the guru is the ultimate mother father relation and friend he is the embodiment of the eternal teaching and he is the greatest wealth that one can be blessed with in the passing away of swami chinmayananda his devotees had lost their most revered guru and their dearest friend but his teachings reminded them that death is for the body alone they knew that their guru had passed out of his body and become one with the cosmic consciousness as well as with the core of their beings do not stand on my grave and weep i am not there i do not sleep i am a thousand my wind i am a thousand winds that blow i am the diamond glints that snow i am the sunlight on ripened green i am the gentle autumn's rain when you awaken in the morning hush i am the swift uplifting rush of quiet birds in circled flight i am the soft stars that shine at night do not stand on at my grave and cry i am not there i did not die his spirit lives on moksha is not freedom from action but freedom in action swami chinmayananda was to be honored with the global vision 2000 award in early in august 1903 he was chosen to be the president of the hindu religious delegation representing hinduism worldwide at the meeting of the parliament of world religions in September 193 he was invited to address the world religious congress exactly 100 years after swami vivekananda's historical address there 14 eminent world leaders were to meet to guide the world into the new millennium none of this came to be as swami chinmayananda 
attained Mahasamadhi on 3rd August 1903. However, by then, the world has acknowledged him as a spiritual giant and a star of exceptional brilliance in the ancient divine Guru Parampara, lineage of spiritual masters, unbroken since time immemorial. His vision lives on in his mission, the Chinmay mission geared up to continuous global work with an intensity of rededication to its imm- immortal founder, Swami Tejumayananda, the able, committed and devoted disciple of Swami Chinmayananda, was appointed as the new head of Chinmay mission. In his first address, he told devotees, there can never be another guru, Guru Dev Swami Chinmayananda. No one can ever replace him. At best, each of us can serve him as a dasa, loving servant, like Sri Hanumanji to Lord Rama. The first couple of years after Swami Chinmayananda's Mahasamadhi was proof of the fact that a realized master's name seems to have as much power as his physical presence. At the time of his passing away, the Innumerable centers the world over reeled in shock and uncertainty about their functioning, which had so far revolved solely round him. All such fears melted away as the mission's activities continued to grow in leaps and bounds. Giant projects saw successful completion and continued to grow. Many experienced a fresh inspiration and an added glow in their work. Many joyously discovered problems being solved in unexpected ways. The 50th year of the Chinwami movement which began in 1951, is to be celebrated in the year 2001, was to be celebrated in the year 2001, to assess the various aspects of the organization and plan for the 50th year celebration in a fitting manner. The first World Workers Conference conference of Chinmay Mission was held in the Sandipani Himalaya Ashram in Siddhavadi, Himachal Pradesh, India. From July 27 to August 3, 1998, delegates represented most of the mission centers across the globe, presided over by Swami Tejumayananda, head of Chinmay Mission Worldwide, the then head of Chinmay Mission Worldwide. The conference was conducted by the highest professional and management standards. It was proud proof of the Chinmay Mission's continuing and magnificent progress in the area of spiritual transformation through service to society. It was a reaffirmation of the eternal presence of Swami Chinmayananda that his spirit lives on. Swami Chinmayananda does live on, does lives, live, does live on in his written works, video and audio cassettes, and above all in the hearts of his countless disciples and devotees. His spirit lives on in the form of a tiny Balvier center in an oasis in the middle of an African desert, in the heart of a young Navy officer who is doing his little bit to pass on his knowledge to fellow sailors in a small vessel that braves many an ocean.
in the brilliant minds of a scientific scientist in a top research organization who teaches his fellow researchers the synthesis between science and religion as swami ji taught it in the lonely heart of an aged destitute who has gained new meaning in her last days in a chinmay vruddha sansthan old age home swami ji swami ji man in the samadhi where his mortal remains were consecrated at siddhawadi himachal pradesh india he live on he does live on on the lips of his disciples who continue to reach and inspire thousands to live as human beings with human behavior and a divine destination and in the hands and hearts hands and hearts of thousands who today offer money service and love to society but would never have thought of looking beyond themselves if not for the ennobling touch of swami ji's life and work swami ji mananda embodied all this all that is finest and best in our glorious culture and therefore attained a spiritual stature as immaculate and evergreen as the philosophy he stood for om shri chinmay satgurave namaha om om